Hello there! Welcome back to Tuck in Cash. I hope you are doing well. So today we are coming back to another series of Tuck or Play, and this time with the Oceania Bird, of course. So currently, Monster Couch is running a beta testing for Oceania expansion on Digital Wingspan, and I have a chance to play a few games, not too many. So I thought. This would be a good time for me to give my first impression on some of this bird, whether they are worth playing or they are more of a tuck bird. So without further ado, let's go straight into it. So the first bird, we have the Abbot's booby. So when when play, you draw three bonus card and this card too, and you may discard bonus card that you did not draw on this turn. So you can discard card that you have in your hand. Um, I think this is a this is a good play, especially for two fish. You already get five points, and you get to look at three bonus card and cycle for bad bonus cards. So, um, not amazing, but I think it's a solid play. All right, next we have the Australasian Pippet. So two food, three points. At the end of the game, you tuck one card from the deck behind each bird in your grassland, including this one. So at most you are making five, five tucks at the end of the game. So that's eight points for two food. It's not amazing, but I think most of the time you can expect to score maybe six, seven points from this bird. Um, typically you have, you know, three or four birds in the grassland. Again, not amazing, but I think it's still playable. Definitely not gonna play it in the early game, but um, I think it's a it's a solid play. All right, Aust Australasian Shoveler. So choose one other player. You both draw one card from the deck. All right, this is a co-op bird where you give away card, um, but I guess it's a good way to jumpstart your wetland with two food four points um i'm still feeling it out whether you know what's the value of giving out resources like card and um food in oceania um i feel like card are a lot more valuable in oceania because you can turn them into eggs with the new board so but in any case i think it's a basic bird to jumpstart your, your wetland so i would say this is a play all right australian ibis Shuffle the discard pile, then draw two cards from it. You choose one and tuck it, or you can add it to your hand. So you can choose either to tuck the card or keep the card. Um, I guess play. This reminds me of White Stork. So you get to play in the grassland, then draw a card that way. Um, the only thing is you have to draw it from the discard pile. So in the early game, I guess you still have this card from the hand, so you still get some cards, but maybe not the most amazing card in early game. Um, but mid to late game might be useful. Um, I play it. I've played in game, and yes, it, it it has some use. So I would say I'm leaning play on this, the Australian ibis. All right, Australian magpie. That's a very long text here. So you discard one egg from each bird in the row and column and that has egg on it, excluding this bird for each discarded egg you draw, you catch two grain. All right, that's a lot to comprehend here. So row and column and you discard one egg to catch two grains. So you can exchange one egg to two grains. So one point, I guess. So you need to have eggs on birds, three food for four points and a lot of planning yeah just for the long text i i'm gonna say tug for this i have no time for that <laughs> um all right let's take a look what do we have here australian outlet night jar so it's a pink power when another player take the game food action you gain a grub from the bird feeder all right i think it's cheap and you know, pretty useful power. Grub is always, most of the time, available in the feeder. So I think it's a good bird to jumpstart um, your game. I would say, from my experience, this bird probably has a pretty low, like, small window of play. If it's not your first forest bird or first, um, 
like first column bird, it's hard to justify playing it because it's only two points. But I think overall it's still a solid play, especially in the early game. All right. Yeah. Australian Raven. So at the end of the game, you get to cash up to five food from your supply on this bird. So at most, you can make 12 points from three food. Okay, I, I guess that's a pretty, pretty good return. Um, definitely not a bird that you want to play early game, but late game. And you have a good, you know, forest that generate food or somehow you get a bunch of food. And food generation is easier in Oceania. Um, but most of the time, I don't feel like I find myself, you know, end up the end the game with a bunch of access food, though. Um, but I think seven points is still solid base point. So play yeah play um australian reed wobbler so play another bird in your wetland pay the normal cost but with one egg discount this i'm not feeling strongly about um the reason being in and i'm talking about you know i'm i'm rating all this bird on on the new oceania board so on the oceania board you just need to play one bird in the wetland to draw two cards so you don't really need two birds in the wetland like you did with the base game to gain two card so i feel like play another bird kind of get nerfed a little um in the oceania board um i think this could come in handy when you have bonus or end of round goal that you you can use it to compete for um, but at the same time, you know, the, the more birds you play, that means the next bird that you're going to play in the wetland is going to cost more eggs. And eggs are hard to get in Oceania. So I'm leaning no on this wobbler here. Tuck. So, all right. Australian shell duck. So you draw one face up card from the tray that has a either cavity or star nest. And you may reset or refill the tray before doing so. Um, you will see quite a few birds with similar power, and I find them very powerful, especially in early game, um, because you get to reset the tray. So you basically, you know, get to see additional three cards. Um, great way to jumpstart your your wetland, and even throughout the game, you're gonna use this power a lot. So definitely a solid play for me. All right, Australian zebra finch. Um, if the previous player has a grain tuck a card behind this bird okay um not super impressive power here but it does have a star on us and it's cheap to play um i don't know it's like would i would i play it just for the star on us i don't think i don't think the brown power is super reliable but the star nest is nice um, I'm going to say leaning tuck here. Um, I think with a lot of the Oceania bird, if it's low point, I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical, at least based on my experience so far. All right, Black Naughty, big point birds. So reset the bird feeder and gain all the fish. Okay, and you may discard any of the fish to tuck as many cards behind this bird. So it's kind of, it's kind of like a tugging bird and you re-roll the feeder. Um... I would say this is a play, you know, um, nine points for three fish is already quite good. And if any additional tug you can get from the brown power is add a bonus. Um, you know, it seems scary that it costs three fish. But again, in Oceania, the, the food gaining is just much more efficient. So I think that's a lot more opportunity. You can play the black naughty here. So I would say this is a play. All right, Black Swan. So this is a game end power. You lay eggs on bird with wingspan over 100 centimeter, including this one at the end of the game. Um, I would say again, three food for six base points, and then just however many eggs you can get from that. Um, based on my experience, I think this is one of the better um, yellow power um, bird in the game. Um, I think you can solidly make, you know, so including this one, so that's seven points at least. So um, if you can get additional two or three points, yeah, I think it's a solid play for late game point bomb. All right, so we have black shoulder kite. So reset the bird feeder and gain a rodent. 
and you may give it to another player if you do lay up to 3 eggs on this bird. You know, I've played this bird before, but the power didn't work. I have so much hope for the power to work, but it didn't work. So I, that might have skewed my my opinion on this bird a little. Um, it is very strong if you can get three eggs um, from one activation, even one activation, um, because how Oceania work, laying eggs is very inefficient. So you can, if you can gain additional three eggs, that's so strong. Um, but again, it's not super reliable, it's low points, and it costs two Rodin. I'm leaning Tuck on this. I'm leaning Tuck. Okay. Blight Hornbill. So, discard all eggs from one of your bird with Cavity Nest, and then Tuck twice the number of cards from deck behind this bird. So you can convert eggs into Tuck in a 1 to 2 ratio. It's interesting. I guess again another late late game point bomb, right? I mean three cherry for seven points. Okay, you can say that's solid seven. And then depending on how many eggs you can convert into card, you might get additional two or three points here. Yeah, I'm leaning kind of yes. I assume star nest eggs in star nest count as well. So yeah, if you can get additional 2 or 3 points, that's 3 food for 10 points. Pretty average. I would say not amazing, but solid late game points gaining bird. Um, that's a play. Alright, next we have the Broga. So you choose one other player. They lay one egg and you draw two cards. Hmm. I mean, that's a thing. Draw two cards sounds amazing, but giving another player eggs, that's also helping other player a lot, um, especially in early game. Gaining egg in Oceania again is so difficult. That one egg is a good advantage here, um, but it is easy to play. And yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean to it, yes, but... Only if I don't have other wetland option. I don't think it's my go-to for three food um, and giving opponent a. But all right, leaning play here. All right, what do we have next? Brown Falcon. Look at the card if it has grub or rodent tuck it. So it's a hunting bird. Um, yeah, hard to say what's the probability of hunting here. Gonna ask our math wizard, maybe Flan from Winging It to calculate this. Um, but two food for five points, and I assume a better hunting power than a lot of base game bird. I guess play? Yeah, potentially a grassland engine bird. Budgeriger. Uh, tuck the smallest bird in the tray behind this bird. So it's basically a guarantee tuck. There's always going to be bird in the tray. Um, and a grain for zero point. Yeah, very flexible habitat. I would say play, but very, very short window of play. Um, really, past round two, hardly, even late round two, it's hard to see opportunity to play this bird. All right, Cockatiel, another cheap bird for two points. You get to discard one grain and choose one card from the tray to tuck it. Um, hmm, I don't know. This is bad, right? Because in base game, we have birds that discard a grain and tuck two cards, but this only tuck one card. Is this cheap to play, but yeah, I don't know. Or oh, do you want to play in the forest? So is this like a forest, forest engine bird? But you have to, you have to discard a grain. I'm leaning kind of tuck for this. Again, if this is in my early hand, or like starting hand, it's cheap to jumpstart my board, I I, I would play it. Um, but just for the power, I don't think, I think it's kind of lackluster. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say tuck for this bird. All right, that's a long name here. So we have Counts, Reggie's, Birds of Paradise. All right, big point, seven, big birds, seven points. Choose one other player, you both gain a cherry. So sharing food and 
Yeah, this is kind of like the the thrush, like hermit thrush or um, some other bird in base game. I'm not impressed. Just because I'm, I'm just saying tuck because I'm not impressed by the power. It just eh, kind of okay. So, I'm gonna say tuck on this. All right, what do we have next? Crested pigeon. So, cash up to eight grain from your supply on this bird. So that is one grain. So that's easy to play. Again, just depends on how many, how many, how many grain you can cash at the end of the game. I play this bird and maybe I catch like maybe two to three, two to three grain. And yeah, so it's like maybe five or six points total and then you minus eggs. So I think typically, I think in most case, maybe you net like three to three to five points with this bird for one food. Not amazing, but I think it's still playable. Um, for one food, so yeah, I'm gonna say play for this. All right, next we have the Crimson Chad. So discard one food and tuck one card behind this deck. That is interesting. So it is very cheap for four points in the grassland. I guess where are the food coming from? Maybe you have a raven or some birds that generate food in the grassland. But still, one to one, one to one point is not amazing. The only thing that's saving is, is it has four bird points. So, and flexible food costs. Yeah, I'm not sure about this. Um, I, I haven't played this bird. So, I'm going to say play for now just because of the good value. But I don't know what kind. There are too many situations, this is going to be amazing. All right, next we have the Eastern Rosella. So all player gain one nectar from the supply. You may also gain one grain from the supply. So give away nectar, but you get additional grain. I don't know, it's kind of expensive too. You have to spend two nectar. So you can't really play in your starting hand. And you're giving away nectar. I think they gotta be better forest bird. So yeah, I think I've seen better forest bird than this. So I'm 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 gonna say tug on the Rosella here. All right, Eastern Whipbird. Um, so two food, five points. Choose one other player, and you both get one grain from the supply. Okay, again another co-op bird that you're giving away food. But it's easier to play and you get five points. Yeah, it's pretty basic and but I think it's better than some of the some of the for example the cross bill, it costs two grain. In this case it costs one grub and a grain, so it's easier to play in the early game. So I'm I'm leaning play on this. It's a solid, not amazing, solid play. Alright, next we have Emu. So you, you gain all the grain that are in the bird feeder and then you keep half and choose how to distribute the remaining among other player. Yeah, I don't know. So you keep half, like how, how many grains are there typically in the feeder? Like maybe two, three, and then you gain one grain and then you have to give away grain. And this bird is kind of expensive. Yeah, I'm not convinced. I'm going to say tuck on the emu. All right, next we have the Gala. Um, so three grain, five points. Choose one other player. They reset the bird feeder and gain a grain if that's one. You tuck two cards from the deck behind this bird. So I think you get to tuck regardless if the other player get the grain or not. Um, so this is a two points engine bird and your opponent might not get a grain or they might not need a grain. I think that's pretty solid play, like two points engine bird. Um, it is expensive, but if you can build up in mid or late game or even early game in the forest, I think it's quite strong. I, I, I think that's a play for sure. Um, all right, I think we're gonna wrap up part one there. Um, so yeah, that was tuck of play on Oceania bird. 
I hope you enjoy watching this. Let me know what what do you think of some of the birds that we have talked about so far in the comment. And yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.